Today we're going to talk about brakes and why you should not use them when doing a descent. Hi, welcome back to the channel. This video is targeted more towards novice overlanders, so if you're an experienced overlander, this video just might not be for you. This fall, I took a trail that led to what felt like the top of the world. I'm being a bit dramatic here as it was only 6,000 feet of elevation. Regardless, we did a bit of climbing on this adventure. And we did a bit of descending too. I've done a lot of wheeling over the years, but I don't remember my inclinometer going past 30 degrees. This was a first for me. Initially I tried 3rd gear 4 low to control my speed, but it wasn't quite enough. As you can hear, I had to control the descent just a bit with my brakes. 2nd gear was much better. It controlled my speed perfectly and I wouldn't need to use any brakes at all. And this is really, really important when you're doing a steep descent for a long time. For you automatic transmission nerds out there, Jeep's got you covered with a really handy hill descent button. You have to be in four low to activate this system, but it basically works the same way as my manual transmission. Manually select one of the lower gears, like first or second, using the accelerator to control your descent speed. Remember, when you let off the accelerator, the engine will retard, acting as a brake. You'll notice how the brake lights are not lighting up on my Jeep. The same wasn't true for many people in our group, who were relying on brakes to control their speed throughout our descent. So I know it's hard, I know it's a bit unnatural to not use your brakes, but you really have to fight the urge uh, of using your brakes when approaching steep hills. And there's a couple things wrong with doing what amounts to about four kilometers worth of descending and using your brakes to control your speed versus your engine. So even if you're going slow, your brake system is going to get really freaking hot. And these rubber hoses already expand under hard braking. So as the temperature increases, that problem is just going to compound more. And you're going to get more expansion. And the more expansion at the hose level means less fluid into your caliper. There's a common term for that. It's called brake fade. Now, there is a cure for brake fade. It's stainless steel brake lines. These uh, cold or hot do not expand so you get all the intended fluid into your caliper and that's why stainless steel brake lines offer you uh, increased braking power. Now that doesn't mean you can uh, go down a hill like this one riding your brakes the whole way down because you're actually going to have an even worse problem if you do that and that problem is going to be glazing. So the way, the way your, your, your brake system really works is it relies on two different types of metal offering friction. When, you're, when your brake system gets glazed, so both your rotor gets glazed as well as your, as, as your brake pad. And what that means is both surfaces are smooth like glass and you're, you're going to lose that required friction and your brakes are going to be even worse. And the difference between glazing and brake fade is brake fade goes away when your system cools down. A glazed rotor could actually need resurfacing and in many many cases uh, your pads are, are shot and, and can actually shatter and disintegrate. The last issue that can be caused by using your brakes instead of the engine can be displayed by this. My worst descent ever. Pay close attention to my front tires. Oh my God. <laughs> I was actually okay because this was a, a pretty short descent. Um, but you can see how as soon as my front wheels locked, I lost all steering. And so if you're on any kind of a precarious section or where you need your steering, this is like the worst thing to do. So that's kind of the last reason why you should not uh, rely on your brakes when, when doing descents and always, always let your engine do the braking. That's why um, these Jeeps have a hill descent feature. So I hope you like this video and I hope you found it helpful and, and you've kind of learned a thing or two about approaching a steep descent like the ones we saw at Limestone Mountain or, or any steep descent for that matter. Uh, if you did like this video, smash that like button and don't forget to subscribe. And maybe, just maybe, I'll see you all out on the trails. I'm out of here. Thank <laughs> you.